special city council Let's meeting workshop is called to order. We do have a quorum. Is this for us? Or yeah. This is yours? Yeah. All right. Public comments. We have none. All right. Number two. Finance Utilities Department update. Wanda. You're going to do that for us, right? Yeah. Can I sit here, sir? No, ma'am. I needed. He was on right tonight. Okay, this is going to be short and sweet because I don't like to talk, okay? Go for it. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Is that okay, Sam? Okay, in my department, we do municipal court purchasing, courts of clerk, and the treasurer's duties. So we're going to kind of go through it. Staffing, I've got five full-time employees and two part-time. The part-time is the judge and with Count Randall's part-time in my area so as the city prosecutor. Got a deputy city clerk, purchasing agent, so see we kind of combined in our area. Utility billing clerk, which also is a cemetery clerk. I've got a court clerk and a utility cashier and an accounts payable clerk and a utility cashier. So we have more than one function downstairs for each of my, my ladies. Municipal court is held every Wednesday at 2.30 here at City Hall in the Council Chambers. Um, Judge David Hood, and if it's a trial date, then our City Attorney Randall Shadid is in the courtroom. We're a court of not of record, so we don't have a court reporter. Our court clerk um, writes down what the judge has ordered, and therefore we don't have a jury trial or we're even juvenile court. Yeah. And, and I yeah. may I may interject on that. On juvenile court, we we have the ability to do so. I believe when's the last time we've had a juvenile court? I, I don't I think we ever have. Now I'll tell you why that's important. Um, for example, uh, any city ordinance that pertains to a juvenile, we can't prosecute um, on a city ordinance. <coughs> on a district charge, state charge, that would go through district court. So, for example, skateboarders downtown. That is a city ordinance. If the person uh, violating that is a juvenile, we do not have the ability to cite. We don't have the ability to enforce. We can go tell them it's against the law that there is no teeth. And so to, to establish a juvenile court um, isn't the most difficult thing in the world. It's really not. We would, you would set aside, you could say that from uh, 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, one day a month, will be our time to have juvenile court, and there may or may not be any citations on it. Um, a little bit more paperwork, but um, not the end of the world. So I may be discussing with you guys the establishment of a juvenile court in an effort, uh, for example, <coughs> curfew uh, violations. Mm -hmm. um, being a city ordinance, we can't enforce it, and I assure you that um, our youth know that. Um, What's the time? What, are we, what do you mean? What do we have established right now? No, nothing. Or, oh, right oh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, certain days at a certain time. Yeah. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Midnight on weekdays let, or oh, something. I think so. Around midnight on one of those <laughs> days. So um, we don't have the enforcement. Um, mm -hmm. We don't have the ability to prosecute, I should say. Um, so our, our officers cannot write tickets for that because they'd have nowhere to go. How, how, many, <clears throat> how many people do you think we'd be dealing with in this? I don't, I, I think very few. It could be one of those situations kind of where um, I've, I've seen a juvenile court that would have zero tickets for four months. <clears throat> so then you would, what you would do is you would have the, um, the judge come in, the prosecutor wouldn't come in because by then we would know if there was anything to prosecute or, we, or the judge wouldn't come in either. So we would know, let's say a week in advance, that if we wouldn't actually be holding it, we just had the ability to hold it. I don't think it's a bad idea, and, and I'll, I'll look into some more details. We've talked about it briefly. Um, our main issue is that um, we have an increased concern about skateboarders on um, the sidewalks downtown, causing a, a, a threat to, to public safety, and um, no way to enforce it. So that's why I want to throw up there that we don't have that. That's what I wanted to know. No, that was anyway. <laughs> so what the heck? Oh, can you clarify? So. Um, are you saying a regular court case that somebody under was under 18 can't go before that court? I mean, there's a rule? Yes, because it's, it's prosecuted differently. It has to have a separate court. They can't be tried in an adult court. And so you have to set up a Is juvenile it 18 court. Is it 18 or 21? Or? Um, Randall, 17? Under 18. Under 18, 18 okay. Up to the 18th birthday. Okay. And it's a real, 
It's a whole separate court system, computer system, bookkeeping system. Okay. And so I, would, kind of look at what I wouldn't recommend it for our city because it's, it's, it's cumbersome. Very cumbersome and a big expense. And Randall, the only reason I brought it up is there's been a, a public outcry about um, skateboarding downtown on the, the streets and we on the sidewalks, and we don't have a way to prosecute. Call their parents. Yeah. Yeah. The parents, mm -hmm. but I pay the ticket. <laughs> Not the way the ordinance is set up. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. okay, so if you do receive a ticket from a Guthrie police officer, we do have four different ways that you can pay the ticket. You can pay it by mail, <coughs> mailing it to here at City Hall, pay it in person at the finance window. You can pay it by phone or online, and there is a convenience fee with that service that there are quite a few people that do use it. It's so easy to get online and pay your ticket and they're willing to pay the convenience fee. Or you can appear in court and plead your case to the judge. Now when you are in court, um, you have the ability of uh, pleading guilty or not guilty. If you plead not guilty, then a uh, trial date is um, scheduled and that's when Randall, he attends that court. We usually have it once a month. Sometimes there's twice. Once, sometimes twice. Twice. We try to do it all in once a month. Uh, the courtroom follows the same etiquette as our district court. You know, we ask for the pagers, the phones to be on silence, to remove hats, no food or drink. Uh, if they fail to appear in court, then we do send them a letter year to a peer letter, giving them a week to come in and pay. We don't do to give them a new court date. They have to pay or post a bond. If they don't pay, then there is a warrant issued that following week. And the warrant fee here is $100. Let's get okay. Another point that I may bring up about our court is that, as y'all may know, Another conversation that sometimes arises in my office is um, we don't prosecute DWI um, offenders. Mm -hmm. There is an ordinance that would uh, allow us to. Um, one of the main reasons that that has been chosen for us not to do that and why we utilize the district court um, to, to prosecute is that in the state of Oklahoma, there's basically kind of a three strikes type rule um, that if you prosecute in a municipal court, especially without a court of record, which is what we are, the maximum fine for a DWI would be $500 and it's not on your state record. We believe to get um, uh, drivers that are intoxicated and drinking off of the streets that we would prosecute through districts so that it follows the, the three strike rule. So we, we choose to not prosecute. If the council ever wanted to give me direction to, to start doing that, I'd be happy to have that conversation. But I want to let you all know we do not prosecute DWIs. Can, we kick can you clarify district. the difference between DUI and DWI? Ooh, Randall. It's the amount of blood alcohol that you blow or have in your blood. Uh, DWI, or DUI is the most extreme, and the biggest fine, and DWI is less extreme, but still alcohol related. I'm happy to say I don't know. <laughs> Check out the Texas list. Of <laughs> yeah, we don't. Okay, so that's it for court. And we'll go to the function of purchasing. And the mission of central purchasing is to provide the highest level of customer service to requesting departments and vendors by maintaining good working relationships. The goal in purchasing is to obtain goods and service of the highest quality at the lowest cost and to assist all departments with any procurement needs. And the next page is kind of going into more detail on what we have to look for to make sure that they are following all the requirements, which is what's in the city charter, in our code, state federal laws, laws and regulations. And uh, we also look for the specific needs for each department. We do have a lot of departments here in, in the organization. We assist the departments in the procurement and management of goods and service, develop and maintain current bid list and vendor listing, contract for supplies, equipment, services required by any department in accordance with the law and purchasing policy, and we make sure that we do competitive bidding when it's required. 
we dispose of obsolete and surplus properties, which you've had some council agenda items on surplus properties. And we're going with gov.deal, which, which seems to work out real well. Uh, we also prepare and review bid specification contracts and request for proposals. Um, we try to look at our purchasing policy and revise it to every two or three years. Uh, the last time it was revised was in 2011, so it's fairly, fairly new. Um, we also do the bid data on the city's website, which there are quite a few people that do look at that because we get phone calls on it. In FY 2013, we issued 524 purchase orders, and that is way down because we have gone to a purchasing card and department heads, I think, really like it. Less paperwork for them. And we had 5,279 items purchased from the purchasing card, totaling $1.5 million. And we do receive a rebate on that card, mm -hmm. and we've increased that rebate um, at least double from last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the last Two rebate years. was $19,190. Does that save labor costs at all? Yes. Mm -hmm. Significant. And that's why, you know, uh, our accounts payable card is also usually a cashier. She's able to double that jobs. And where does that nineteen thousand dollars go? General fund yeah. revenue. Mm -hmm. Or the council doesn't get paid. No, a dollar a year. Dollar. That, that dollar may year. go to that. That may be our dollar. <laughs> yeah. We keep the rest. It's Bank of America. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, they are really been good to us. When they see a purchase that's not within our scope, they call us. And we've had some purchases that weren't ours. So we had cool. to, so we, of course they deleted that charge sure. off and gave us a new card and went on down the road. But yeah, they, they've contacted us, I know, at least twice since we've been with them. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. We're also required when there is a new employee to make sure they understand all our rules and regulations, our purchasing policy and that stuff. So we have a little packet form. Welcome to Purchasing 101. So before they get a purchasing card, they have to review this sign off that they understand the rules and regulations. So we just don't put a new employee out there with a purchasing card and say, here, it's all, it's all yours. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and then you do refresher training once in a while just to be safe and secure, and, but or that may be in the future? That'll probably be in the future, but we yeah. did have Crawford's kind of do an analysis of the first year on it, and they really didn't find a whole lot. No. I mean, the department heads followed our, our rules and regulations. So Does Kim audit that on a regular basis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do that on a daily basis, every working day. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. We get an email often from Kim reminding of us of the rules, so that might mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> She's, She's on it. the ball. She's great mm -hmm. at it. Yeah, and that kind of goes into the next slide. Department responsibility, they have to adhere to the policy, and of course Kim and Sandy is our accounts payable clerk. They make sure that they do. Um, process requisitions according to the policy. Now, if they're not able to use the purchasing card, then we have to do an e-requisition to get that um, product encumbered. Because by state law, you have to encumber it before you order it. But that's why the department heads like the purchasing cards, because Kim does the encumbrance for the purchasing card. They don't have to. Yeah. But we also make sure that there's backup documentation on all the requisitions, even on the purchasing card. They have to provide us with the shipping slip and the invoices. Um, if they're necessary to solicit bids, which we'll get on to the bid scenario here in a little bit, we have to make sure to make sure the department heads know that they need some lead time. It usually takes 30, 35 to 45 days. You have 21 days to advertise after you get bid specifications set up. So you've got to advertise, and then usually at the next council meeting, that's when we bring it to you all to award whatever the product is. And of course, like we said, we make sure that the technical specification for the bids and the RFP are in compliance with our rules and regulations. And do the obsolete surplus property, they have, the department heads have to, prove, to present it to council and then Kim takes it from there to get it on the website and the gov.deal so we can get it sold. 
our purchasing policy, like I said, it was updated in 2011. Um, at that time, we did increase the purchasing. Um, 1500 or less, this is just an open market. They don't have to do competitive bidding, but we do encourage them to. So we make sure that we're getting the best product for, for the money, lowest money. The 1500 to 3000 they have to get three quotes. When they get the quotes, they also have to put that on the e-requisition, whoever they were and the dollar amount of them to make sure that we're getting the lowest quote. The 3000 to 25000 they have to get written quotes. And those written reports have to be stapled to the requisition of the purchase order. And then anything over 25000 has to go out for seal bids for council approval. Right, so I got a question. So mm -hmm. and when you talk about bids versus written bids, uh, that could just be over the phone? Mm -hmm. Quotes versus written mm -hmm. quotes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we do take emails as a written quote, it, or a written, yeah, if it's within that dollar range. And even on the fifteen to 3000 if it's written, that's fine. They just take what to it instead of having to write it in the body of the purchase order. i got a question on records. Is there a requirement that you have to keep those? Like, let's say that you've actually purchased something, you went to the lowest bid, whatnot. You have written verification that you did this. How long do you have to keep those records? Mm -hmm. If it's to the twenty-five thousand, I want to say it's either five or ten years. I'd have to look it up. But the fifteen hundred. Wow. But the fifteen hundred. I mean, no, two years. Do you have to keep them on paper? Or can you keep them electronically? Either. Either. Mm -hmm. okay. And then here comes the competitive solicitation. Sylvia's has had six in FY thirteen. The street CIP, agriculture lease, grass management. Wastewater treatment plant improvements, snow removal equipment, safe routes to school for the sidewalk. So we haven't had a whole lot. Um, and of course, those go before city council. Once the bids are open, the engineer or the department head reviews it and comes up with the lowest and the best. You don't always have to go with the lowest, but you have to justify why you're not going with the lowest. Request for proposals, we only had one, and that's the AMR AMI. On my meters. Mm -hmm. uh, piggyback backing, that's where other state agencies, government entities have already done the research on what's the lowest and the best. So we can look at their list, uh, from the state contracts and other one, we can look at their list, see if we can purchase from them and we don't have to go out for bid. Uh, some stuff that we've done on that is the phone system that we're getting ready to install hopefully next week. Loader, backhoe, grader, police vehicles, uh, water treatment plant vehicle, excavators. So we've, we've done the piggyback being quite a bit. We do it more than we do the seal bids because we are able to find what we're needing on the state contract. We also use that Houston Galveston area council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so between those two, we usually can find what we're looking for. And it works for us. Sole source. We don't use this very often. That it's items that is unique and that the vendor is a sole provider from whom that item or service can be obtained. Uh, I kind of went back to 1999 and I think we're going to find two and they're fire department related. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. Jaws of Life, the thermal imager, defibrillators, so stuff that you just can't go to Lowe's or Home Depot <coughs> or Ace. You know, they're, they're special in their life, own way. Emergency purchases, I wish I could say we don't use this very often, but when there's a disaster, such as flood or tornadoes, there is a need for that. But that's usually, that's the only time we do. We don't let the department head do it because of poor planning. Yeah. Just because you haven't had your car oil changed done in three years and you drop a transmission, it's not exactly an emergency. No. Just in case that was to ever happen. <laughs> So we don't use emergency with purchasing very, very often. Okay, that's I'm pretty well on purchasing. Any more questions on purchasing? Mm -hmm. City Clerk's Office. We maintain records, old, old records. Um, the oldest ones that I have downstairs, Serena won't let me throw away, mm -hmm. is cemetery records. The ownership, 
who's purchased spaces and who's buried in what space and all that good stuff. So you keep them back to the late 1800s for these records. Um, Only certain ones. Only certain ones. Very, very few. What are the this? What are types of records you need to have? Is there required back that by law? Far? Minutes. Minutes. Oh, minutes. Ordinances, resolutions, Ordinances, resolutions. Yeah. and really cemetery records. Okay. What was okay? So minutes. Minutes, not agendas. Your agendas only have a two-year retention, for example, okay. um, which is kind of amazing to some people, but the meat of your meetings is the minutes. I mean, yeah. it's what you decided, not yeah. what was on the agenda. And basically, the agenda is in the minutes. I mean, okay. So, so minutes, minutes, cemetery records? Um, ordinances minutes. and resolutions. Uh, okay. Those Orders are your permit records. Right. Okay. Then you start getting into your majority of records are about two years in the state of Oklahoma. Some are seven, some are five. Um, personnel records are parts, those are lengthy, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. many years. Um, the the rule of thumb for, for municipalities to, what we should adhere to is a very strict records retention program, which means if you keep records longer than what you should keep them, they are subject to open, open Records Act. What that means is that you don't want to keep 30-year-old records that are now just completely useless and the council has changed up 10,000 times and the whole... you got to store them. It's all changed. You're storing them. So we are strict. Like your agendas, we, I, I keep them and as we add an agenda, take the back one out, destroy that document. And so you just, you, you push out. So if a staff member has ever asked me for more storage room, my first question is going to be asked, clean out your files and, and see that that those are updated right. Things like um, grant uh, grants, those are forever. Or, or it's a lot of them are 20, 25 20, years. 20, 30 years. So if anything is grant funded, you're keeping that stuff. So we try to do the best we can on, on records retention. A great thing that Jim does is um, we did at one point do a mass clean out and then we use the rotary shred day in an effort to shred our shred. <laughs> so we have a program right now where we're getting yeah, rid of boxes mm -hmm. every time there's shred day. I think we did a significant amount last month. So mm -hmm. keeping records is not always the, the thing you actually want to do. You keep the right records. Like city council minutes, I have them going back to 1911, but prior to that, they're at the museum. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> With great penmanship. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything was handwritten. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we have any, speaking Don't of that, to to go back on those ordinances like that, are there any of the ordinances back that we probably need to go back and update, get rid of? It's well, been codified okay. pretty recently where it goes under attorney review, one, to make sure there's no conflicts. Um, I don't think we have any that would hit Jay Leno. Like, in other words, I've been in cities where they still had an ordinance that one was no spitting on the sidewalk. sidewalk yeah. And technically they kept it because it was almost comical. Yeah. I mean, right. it, it was one of those, ours yeah. isn't, it's been codified recently. Because yeah, I, I remember, did, like, I think it was one I remember reading about Oklahoma City one time, and they was you couldn't let your cows roam the street at night. We believe in that, yes. Yeah. And so we're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why I was asking that. I think one you about walk, bringing the herd into town. Right. I think one you couldn't walk backward eating a hamburger. Yeah, you know, I mean, we, yeah, like we unfortunately yeah. don't have any of those fun ones. Oh, rats. Ours are pretty yeah. dry. It does seem like we did go through that process. Y'all done it. Two years ago. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we didn't go through the whole cohort. Does anyone? No, I know. Okay. Oh, that's about. Uh, uh, there. Yeah, we didn't oh, get to go through the whole, the whole cohort. Yeah, we did sorry. go through some chapters and got them revised and updated. And we do have some of our old records laser fished, like our minutes and ordinances and resolutions. So they're yeah. easier to find. You can scan or search, do search by a keyword. And John, that might have been your question too. A record can be electronic now. Mm -hmm. Our emails are records. I do ask my staff to clean out a year old emails. Um, the, but uh, they can be electronically stored or physically stored. So we do try to electronically store. And we have backup um, for that. Recently. Of course, on the next slide, prepare and update all cemetery records. That's the, the, who's the owners and the burials. Um, file all ordinances and other important documents. Uh, that's where your code book comes in. All our ordinances are codified into a code book. Are there different, um, do we keep the old ordinances like, in, like at the museum or anything like that? And I have old. some ordinances that go back to 1930. Yeah. Prior to that, I'm sure they are over at the, the museum. I imagine when they got the books, 
but the minute books, they got yeah. also the ordinances. Yeah. Publish all necessary documents in newspapers. Uh, ordinance, I have to publish that in the newspaper, but by the charter, I can do it by gist. I don't have to publish the whole ordinance, which costs quite a bit. So there's a cost saving by just doing it by the gist, which mainly is the, the title. Uh, and also election resolutions, which they do have to be published in full. Because an, an ordinance for us to codify on an ordinance, not a resolution, an ordinance costs us $50. Is that about an approximate per ordinance? Per ordinance, no, because I just do it by chest. You and do. I try to, to get it as less words, maybe $25. 25 dollars uh, Yeah. So just let you know. Yeah. yeah. But the election ordinances does cost quite a bit more because you do have to publish it in the full line and, and it's pretty lengthy. And of course, once, if we do have an election, I have to file that resolution with the Logan County Election Board. Thank goodness they do the elections and not me. Do you, do you have a specific <laughs> place you got to put up, like a specific paper? Or it's got to be just a little bit. Yeah. Email. Are you, you you're talking about I the mean, For paper? example, you could put it in the Guthrie News page versus the, uh, the I mean, then that would be because they're local. So yeah, I'm just wondering if they General circulation. It. General circulation. General the circulation. Guthrie News page is not a circulation. I mean, okay. Guthrie News Leader is about the only paper that we have here in town. Okay. That is. Right, Randall? I'm that's, not telling just, them wrong? No, <laughs> we have an official it record. It has to be a legal publication mm -hmm. right. okay. paper. Okay. We just increased those. Residents, I think it's 500. Non-residents, 600. A space. A space. Yeah, which is what our next slide. Free to easy. an employee of 10 years. Mm -hmm. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. That's, you know, okay. anyone. I would say we're working here. Not in town. It's just 10 years. One dollar. <laughs> our entire salary is one year. Actually, we pay you all to go to this event. Yeah. <laughs> we'll roll you yeah, out right. for free. <laughs> we have our own section, right? Yeah, yes. Down the, it's down by the Cottonwood Creek. <laughs> Row you in down there and leave you. Well, I did do some research on some of you cemetery uh, burial spaces. We have 17,135 burials as of last week. Wow. Yeah. That's more than our population. Mm -hmm. yes, There's more dead people than mm -hmm. people. That's not good. <laughs> of course. Can, I, can I say something? Mm -hmm. I just, for the first time, really went out there just a couple of days ago and just. Our hats off to our guys. Yes, definitely yes. do a great it's job. Beautiful. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. and, and Julie and I were driving through there, and she's like, they, "This place is kept up amazing." Mm -hmm. I just, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, they, we're talking they, about they, cemetery. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, just uh, and they have the weed eat around all the heads. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's always do. That's yeah. a lot of work. We we were just kind of sure that. that's a, because I, I remember a little boy going after him was that away all the time. Yeah. I've always been impressed. Well, now I can go further back than he did because I used to ride my horse out there and look at the. Boot Hill and all these different mm -hmm. things, you know. Yeah. 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 Recycle. Recycle. Yeah. We thought about putting goats out there because um, <laughs> the National Cemetery <laughs> in D.C. <laughs> has goats. Um, Stillwater now has goats at their, um, and, and then we've, um, National Cemetery has goats now. Um, in D.C. They do a great they job of cleaning things up. Really? Yes. No, unfortunately, yes. you eat your flowers, too. And <laughs> so we have to fence the area. Though, yeah, so we've yeah, looked yeah, at yeah, ours, and I don't think I'll bring it up again. I just wanted to tell you we did look at it. And there are cemeteries that do it. Only if we can get pygmy fainting goats. I want so I can you mention have having fainting goats. <laughs> 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 People think you're dying. That's <laughs> just some thing. It's an experiment, though. Anyway, that's my two summers. We do have a very old cemetery, it's the late 1800s. The city of Guthrie uh, received it in 1915. Yeah. People are dying again. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> and, and Cheryl's right, we do have a good hill section. <laughs> and if you ever want to review burials, we do have them on the city's website. They are all of them that are. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Go on check that out. You know yeah. what? Office You're tab, finance. <laughs> no, next month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go to the it's office tab, office finance, <laughs> and then there's a cemetery, and then okay. at the very bottom of that is some of these cemetery burial oh, records. Cool. <laughs> Has just everybody listed? Has everybody listed? Wow. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we got everybody's name spelled correctly. That's the congressional you got it right. misspelled, so right. we'll find them. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. I'm going to go out there and ask him, how do you spell your name? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
We issue permits and license. I know there's a comedian there. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, we only do garage sales for residential only, no commercial. Um, they can do two licenses in a three month period. Uh, FY13, we sold 1,149 garage sale signs. I can't tell you how many permits because they allowed the permit for the yard, but they can purchase two extra signs at $5 a piece to put off site. We do solicitors, peddlers, permits. We have less than a handful. Go, going back something. to the garage sale permits mm -hmm. real quick, mm -hmm. are we getting uh, okay feedback on that? Or I know initially when we did that, some people were upset that they had to do that. So no, I think I think it seemed to go smoothly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and you don't find. I mean, typically you get somebody upset. People get upset at the beginning. Mm -hmm. well, I'm just wondering if it's a continual thing or it seems to settle down. Okay. Settle down. They found new things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Bigger fish to fry. It's always yeah. something new. Yeah. It's always hot when it's new. Mm -hmm. Beer garden permits, we don't have too many of those, but those are tied to a festival or a community celebration. So we just don't have a whole lot of those. Utility billing, that is a huge uh, department in my area. It's, it's very time consuming. But we provide comprehensive, professional, effective, and reliable service to our utility customers. Uh, responsible for managing service requests, concerns, and inquiries. We do have service orders, but I wasn't able to find out how many service orders that we issued in 2013. <coughs> so hopefully they can update that program where we can find out how many in a period of time. We do maintain utility records and bills, final bills. Our customer records, we do save it. Uh, they do still have to fill it out on paper but we scan it and then we save it on electronically. So, no file cabinets. Yay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we also monitor the actives, inactive, and age accounts. Inactive, if we give them two months to pay, if not, we try our best to send them to collections then. But that is on the back burner. If we don't have time that month, then it doesn't get done that month. And of course, then we have to process the mail on a daily basis, and there are quite a few people that still mail their bills in. Customers, we've got about 4,200 utility bills that we send out. About 3,800 is water, 3,000 uh, sewer, solid waste. The count that I could find was four, almost 44,000, but that is each container. So some of the commercial areas that have two dumpsters or you know, it, it counts them that way. Uh, we about have 700 second notices on an average, uh, about 40 disconnects per month. Do you have like how many additions per month? Additions? Like they no, add their count versus connected. connected, or they connected versus disconnected. Are we are we doing more than we lose? Or are we maintaining? We're, we're really maintaining. I have to do a water resources board, and the number doesn't change a whole lot. Maybe 10 or 15, but then it increases the following month by that 10 or 15. So it, it's, it's... We're increasing by 10 or 15, but losing 40? No, so this is 40 disconnects. disconnects. Oh, disconnects. So, yeah, so people have to come Pen and pen bill. Right. And oh, because they, they have to pay the bill. I'm sorry, yeah. Failure to pay. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, the ones that pay the other. Right. Yeah, and then they pay an additional fee right. and extra deposit just because they got disconnected. We do have 630 utility customers that take advantage of our auto draft, which is drafted from their checking or savings account, free of charge. Thank you very much. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For the tenth of every month. And we're going to advertise that more. We were just mm -hmm. talking about. We're going to advertise that more in January. It's 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 great for everybody mm -hmm. to do I that. It'd be pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have about 450 e bills, which means that we don't have to print the bill on paper. There's no envelope charge, no staffing time to stuff those. The bills How do you set stuff. that up? On the city's website. Okay. Well, 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 we're going to advertise both of those. Mm -hmm. Okay. That would help. Yeah. FY13, we build 327,113,000 gallons of water. Can you repeat that? How many was it? 327,113,000. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, this is yours. He's done. 
The last slide, Mayor. Okay, the last slide. Notice you didn't punch your little butt. I told Serena one five minutes. She shook her head. She was being mean to me. Purchasing budgeting, investments, fixed assets, debt management, financial reporting, and we do have financial advisors that do help us out on occasion, like municipal finance, they help us with the water resources board, getting loans from them. Crawfords and Associates, they come and put my books from a cash basis to a accrual basis before it's sent to the auditors. So we have implemented the stabilization fund for both general and GPWA and FY13. And one other note that Serena wanted me to say, I'm going to be leaving in May. Mm -hmm. And... What are you going to do? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> what are you going to do? You'll survive. You'll probably have a lot more fun with me being done. I doubt it. Um, mm -hmm. But it is a council appointed position. It's, a, it's an interesting story, and I'm sure some of you know it, but I, I want to make sure you understand. Years ago, with uh, budget restraints, etc., we combined two positions in, when was this, the 90s? 92. 92. Um, mm -hmm. The council told Wanda that just temporarily she was going to do the work of two people. And so she still does that. So she is, <laughs> she is, um, it's been temporary. Um, it, she holds the official hat in the charter as the treasurer, right? That's what the charter. No, the charter the also clerk. has the clerk too. Clerk. So there's a clerk and a treasurer, which are, one is, both are appointed. They're both appointed. Both actually appointed by the council, um, managed by the city manager. So, mm -hmm. um, we will have conversations coming up on, on um, how do we split up that work when she does leave? How do y'all want to proceed with that? Do we keep it as one? Do we shift other things? And I'll come to you with a plan uh, come February-ish or somewhere so that we're not scrambling after so, she's gone. So technically she's working as the clerk for the city but the treasurer for our board. Um, no, no finance no. officer, oh, okay. basically yeah. treasurer. It's, both, it's still in the charter. So, so it's both, yeah. Okay. It's both. So and also the clerk. If, if, if it's city appointed, then therefore, do we have to do interviews and stuff? No. Um, you can direct staff to do the, the recruitment and the interviewing, and then we would bring to you the most viable candidate. I don't know if we want to do that. Look what we've ended up with all these years. Well, that's what I'm saying. You're about lucky. You're going to get additional help, right? I was going to say, this is a mute point anyway. All I can like say is it seems yeah. to me like he's cruising. I've, I've told her today, I mean, we have to accept the resignation. Not if we get, no, a, large, <laughs> not if we get a large anchor and some anchor <laughs> chain on her leg. <laughs> she can't leave. Yeah. See, I talk way too much. Way over my head. Yeah, you're a red button. I'm like, already Yeah, a long time out. ago. <laughs> It was flash and then finally just quit. Yeah. Any questions for Wanda before she gets comfortable over there in her other chair? Do you I really have to leave? Why? You have to go. Why? <laughs> I've been here too long. Oh, Somebody thank you very much. We appreciate Boy. that. Well, thank you for being here. Longer than the five minute. minutes I thought you were going to take, but I'm <laughs> I impressed. I could have been shy with it. She does too much to put it in five. <laughs> item number three, discussion regarding agenda items. There's a whole lot of them. It's November. It's very typical. <laughs> That's why she um, wanted me to talk about it in five minutes. I would like to talk to someone about item C. Sure. On the streets. Which one? On the paving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have several questions and concerns. I know it's Kenny that basically he's the, he's the expert. He knows. Kenny. Yeah. Kenny. Okay. Kenny. Kenny. He knows which ones to do. Have the funds already been? Have, has bid gone out for the asphalt already? Has anything been done yet? Mm -mm. What we do is, um, you know, this revenue line item uh, stays at around 200 and some change thousand, and that is based off of the user fee. So we don't use any money in your budget. This is directly from the user fee on the bill. So we have uh, guesses right now on how much it is. When we bid it last year, we did come under, um, significantly under what was bid. The purpose of this today is to identify the locations, um, and then we take it out to It's bid. been at street committee, so we... And street committee right. went so through we that. Right. Yeah. 
the staff presented it and we accepted it. Right. And staff this is for you to approve to solicit the bids. Right. So let's say that so it came in 50000 under. We may come back and say, hey, can we do some more streets? We've done that before. So, so, so the streets they've selected to pay? Or repay. Or repay. Mm -hmm. We have no say-so in that? The street the committee? Street committee they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah the street committee that you chose. Cheryl, yeah, Jeff, and myself. Yeah, yeah. I understand it, but now it's before council solves. Are the only thing we do is approving this, or yeah. do we have a say so on what they would recommend? The whole council can you can. This is their recommendation to you to do these streets. That's why the only problem is you're going to have to go so back you, and reprice everything and I figure mean, out if they can afford future things. And, and this was kind of based on his idea of the worst. Worst offenders right. that really other, needed to be taken care of. Other than you and maybe ten, has anybody? Did anybody on the streets committee go out there and look at these streets, or was it just a matter of? We looked I'm at the map. Been, we looked okay, at I'm not map. questioning his. Mm -hmm. No, we looked at the map. I okay. didn't go physically. I've been on the street committee before, though, and we, you know, they, this this list is. Right. It's Answer. old. And okay. it's, it's growing, and we know that those are the It's streets. extensive well, list. Okay, there's two real real concerns I have here. One of them's commerce out there by the. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of heavy trucks that do not belong to the city, with the asphalt company, and then the one on the by Highway 33, and then we have those huge forklifts carrying those steel plates and steel tanks across the road, which and they're tearing the road up right there. Exactly. Now. To re-asphalt that those sections, particularly where the they're going across it with heavy weight, it, it seems like we're going to keep doing that eventually, unless we made a proper crossing, which to me would be cement. I, I think that's the plan. Is that part of the I plan? I think there? that's part of the plan because we had uh, we had mentioned to code enforcement that we wanted something done there hoping that maybe we could get Forum to take care of that okay. part through there. Because so, those two paths yes. they go across, they, they just they tear that up with those. Right. right. The asphalt trucks, they go out via the uh, academy. Most of the time they go out. Academy. So they don't come on cars. No, they don't. So the, that's just regular vehicle traffic there. Vehicle traffic and the oil tankers. Right. The water trucks okay. come through there, and our own vehicles. Okay, uh, my main concern was one of us for those. Right, that was our concern carry. too. And okay. yes, Tenny has taken that into okay. consideration because what of was that? It's three. it's three. Where, three. Yeah. three. Well, I'll, I'll to answer your question. Yeah, I did. I walked Logan from the from uh, Walnut to Maple last night, and it's like a cheese grater. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah. horrible. That that's the part there in front of. Uh, uh, well, armory. yeah, all of that. The armory. armory. And yeah, the armory. Down here that goes into the park. <laughs> right, yeah, oh yeah, that that's bad. I saw them cleaning the grass and stuff bad. off of uh, Logan in front of the armory. These yeah. car falls in it. Right. <laughs> so, I, I mean, if you I mean, if you want to make a change to look at Commerce for Ward 3, I mean, it would be the other. I mean, Commerce is in there. It's just, yeah. yeah are we Commerce doing as much as he wanted? Yeah, it's, it's already there. there. Just to yeah. asphalt it, to me, is no, not enough. No, it has to be built up there. Right, right, okay. So I want to make yes. sure that was done. The yes. other one, yeah, yeah, the other one is the, that road behind Sonic, basically. That is a, that has been like that for probably the last the 15 years I've lived in town. Right. And now yes. they're wanting to asphalt it. We get complaints there. Yeah, we get a lot of complaints. Yeah. And that that's has where been a lot of those list. semis are going to go down that road now. If they that has been on the list a long, okay. long time. All right. I don't know the name of that street. I'm sorry. Uh, that that it's, is um, uh, Vilas. Um, um, two, isn't it? Is that yeah. Ward Two? Be, uh, Ward Two. It's Ward Two. Mm -hmm. First, it's first street. Yeah, first, and first. University of Lincoln. First University in Lincoln. First yeah. street and. Or Grant to Middlewells. Or Grant to Grant Park to Park Grant to It depends which one you're talking about. Oh, yeah, because that's, 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 that's the park entrance. Yeah. I thought that Grant, was a... Grant to Middlewells is where the bridge is. It goes right. to the yeah. park. Yeah, that's right. That we get the semi-truck from the pallet factory comes that's, across that's the bridge right. and through there. The next one over is First Street. Right. You, and it's First Street to University and then University back down to Division. Mm -hmm. or I don't think they'll go around that way because he'd have to make too many turns. No, 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 no. I'm not saying the pallet guy. I'm saying that the 
the Sonic, the guys at the U.S. Food Service that brings food to the Sonic, right, yeah. then they, we will probably have some semi-traffic down there now if we, if we asphalt that. And, and I know, I mean, I'm just looking. I just want to make sure that Next we're going to get some extra traffic from that. You know. All right. The honest answer is I know what you're not saying. keeping up. Well, that's true. That, that's I mean, that one had been kept up. I, I, I can remember we're, yeah, we're, we're not saying. able to keep up with uh, the I remember that street's been that way since I was a little boy, and that's 55 years ago. We really need about 1.5 billion. It's never been on the ground. It's never been I don't think it's ever been on the ground at one time. The gravel has sunk on down. Yeah. 33%. So, All right. Any other questions on agenda items? Number four, request for future items of discussion. Let's know. This is the one that we have um, scheduled for the 17th is Courtney Thompson to come in and um, discuss with us tobacco free public properties that was heard by the Parks Board um, last week. Last week. Week before, week before last. Yeah, before they make a motion. Or did they, they didn't um, vote because what we would like, but they got the head nod, um, the unanimous um, head nod. Um, the intention is come and chat with you guys about it, see what your feelings are. Uh, if you give us the go, we would create an ordinance, then take it back to the Parks Board and let them work through the language, bring you back a recommendation. So this could be is January, it, February. Yeah, and definitely on, on a lot of those, um, the state actually doesn't mind at all. Um, it's also because there is a grant tied to it. But um, if we don't want to enforce for a year, you don't have to enforce for I mean, it's it's to educate the public. It's also to maybe start cessation cessation uh, programs with our own staff because this does affect all of our city properties and our employees. Yeah, cars, trucks, everything. We currently have some of that law, not all of it. In other words, we, we don't allow smoking in vehicles or within city buildings or area the sheds or anything. All right, is that it on number four? That's all right. Number five, we are adjourned. Okay.